Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film and Comics Explained, and as requested, today we're diving back into Stranger Things. Featured throughout the series, the Upside Down is a primordial alternate dimension that mirrors our world. Dustin theorized the Upside Down had existed for thousands, if not millions of years. What we do know for sure is that it's a giant toxic hellscape of electrical storms overrun with vines, spores, and predators connected to a hive mind. And season 4 gave us more clues through retcons and a rewrite of Eleven's history. In it, we learn that she opened the first gate to the Upside Down after a battle with Henry Creel in 1979, something she'd repressed. This was the true inciting incident of Stranger Things and the events surrounding Eleven's escape from Hawkins' lab. While life in the Upside Down is not recognizable to humans, the dimension has its own unique biology and ecosystem. Biological growth of various kinds, such as tendrils and flesh-like membranes, are prevalent across the dimension's version of Hawkins. As far as can be determined, all native biological growth and organisms present in the Upside Down are part of a hive mind. Because of this, the entire dimension is virtually a giant superorganism, one that is aware of nearly everything that happens in the Upside Down. With the rise in the show's popularity, Stranger Things has expanded into a transmedia franchise with a number of tie-in novels and comics. Stranger Things Kamchatka is a pretty amazing prelude that directly sets up Season 4 and introduces us to the Stranger Things multiverse. It reveals Dr. Brenner wasn't the only scientist attempting to unlock powers like telepathy and telekinesis. A Soviet scientist named Dr. Boris Orlov was actually one step ahead of Brenner, theorizing that telekinesis could be used to open gateways to infinite worlds. What this means is, Eleven essentially opened a window into the multiverse. This pushed Henry through an infinite multiverse of realms, until he fell into what we would end up calling the Upside Down. I think that the opening of this initial window brought these two otherwise separate dimensions closer together. Because of this thinning and shortening of distances caused by Eleven, echoes could now be felt. The wild storms in the Upside Down now had the ability to affect the electromagnetic fields in its mirror dimension. Much darker and colder than Earth, it is obscured by an omnipresent fog while ash-like spores drift through the air. Ropey, sentient, root-like tendrils and biological membranes cover practically every surface. And according to scientists at Hawkins Lab, the atmosphere of the Upside Down is toxic and extremely damaging after prolonged exposure, sort of like Twitter. Nancy entered for a brief moment and showed no signs of damage, whereas Will was exposed to the air for a week and became very ill. This toxicity appears to extend to the dimension's flora and fauna as well. When a series of subterranean tunnels extending from the Upside Down began to spread and grow beneath Hawkins, it caused trees and crops nearby to rot overnight. Noise and sound originating from Hawkins is somehow faintly audible in the Upside Down, almost like an echo. At the same time, sound from the Upside Down is not seemingly audible in Hawkins, unless there's a nearby interdimensional portal which it can pass through. I'm right here! I'm right here! Just fall! As mentioned earlier, the Upside Down affects the electromagnetic field of the human world, often causing electronics to malfunction. On a larger scale, the gate's opening caused power surges all over Hawkins, and was strong enough to distort the local magnetic field, causing compasses to point to the laboratory, instead of true north. When the boys ask their science teacher about different dimensions, he refers to Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation, which posits that parallel universes exist. Just like our world, but just infinite variations of it. Going by this logic, there could actually be infinite versions of Earth out there, Okay, so the gang's theories on the Upside Down are primarily based on their knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons, but because the creators don't have the rights to the game, elements are inspired by D&D, rather than being direct adaptations of it. With this, I think an understanding of the source material will help point us in the right direction of what's to come. 
At one point, Elf flips their D&D board upside down before placing Will's piece on top, along with the Demogorgons. Mike realized that Elle is essentially explaining that Will is trapped in an alternate realm hidden from sight, but one still inherently connected with their own, just like the underside of the board. This analogy later inspires the gang to refer to this realm as the Upside Down. Here's where things get really interesting. He can even go underneath the rope. Upside, upside down. down. Exactly. Dustin compares the Upside Down to the fictional Veil of Shadows. While the Veil of Shadows does not actually exist in D&D lore, I think the Upside Down is like the Shadow Fell, also known as the Plane of Shadow in the game. It existed like a reflection and echo of the Prime Material Plane. And just like the Upside Down, it was a bleak and desolate place of decay and death. In 1385 DR, Shah the Goddess of Darkness succeeded in plunging the multiverse into years of upheaval and chaos called the Spell Plague. The elemental and energy planes collapsed into the elemental chaos on the far reaches of space, but not before Shah managed to manipulate the necrotic energies from the negative energy plane and inject it into the plane of shadow. Such was the power of this combination that the souls of the dead began to be drawn to this altered plane and had to pass through it before reaching their final judgment. Shah called her new creation the Shadow Fell, which would go on to be known as the Plane of Shadow. During this time, the parallel dimension became a place from which necrotic energies and shadow magic stemmed. A visitor to the Plane of Shadow experienced the lack of color and light, but local features were quite similar. Casting Shadow Walk in a forest put you in a shadow forest, casting it underwater dropped you in a similar body of water and so on, but from there, things diverged rapidly away from the familiar. Due to the ever-changing landscape, the Plane of Shadow was subject to relatively frequent but very small earthquakes called shadow quakes. I'm sure you've already noticed a number of similarities to the Upside Down. Visitors immediately felt the life force being sucked from their bodies, would never feel warm, and could never shake the feeling of being watched. Emotions and the ability to experience them also seemed to fade over time for those imbued with shadow stuff. Essentially the magical energy of shadow felt that could be manipulated, much like the energy of the Upside Down used by Eleven, Vecna, the Mind Flayer, and possibly Will. But we'll get into that in another video. It is a place of decay and death. A plane out of phase, a place of monsters. It is right next to you and you don't even see it. Eleven's attack on Henry was evidently powerful enough to open a rift between dimensions that had never existed. This takes me to something interesting I noticed in the show. When being advised on how to unleash her power, Elle was told she needed to find strength in a memory that made her sad, but also angry. And that's exactly what she did. She thought of her screaming mother being pulled away from her, and the rage and agony was so intense that it connected Eleven to the Upside Down. This makes me think that the shadow stuff, or energy of the Upside Down, is pain and suffering. This is why it takes the very worst moment of people's lives to open a pathway to it. After transforming into Vecna, Henry began using the same emotional connection to propel him into our realm. Vecna entered the minds of his targets through their pain and suffering. And not unlike Shah, Vecna is able to manipulate the dark and negative energy of the Upside Down. From Eleven's opening of that portal to Vecna's killing spree, the Upside Down can only be accessed by the most painful emotions. It seems to me that the Dark Realm physically mirrors the real world, but without any of its light or love. That's why it became Henry Creel's domain. As his father Victor said, I suppose all evil must have a home. In this way, this mirror world will always exist because it's a reflection of humanity's darkness. This also posits that there is also another world composed by humanity at its best. One that perhaps Eleven is drawing energy from whenever she's overwhelmed by joy and love. This is why the overall remedy to defeat the incursion is happiness and love, themes that have been reinforced throughout. That was you guys who saved me. That was you guys. Just as pain can open a door to the Upside Down, happiness can also open a door to the real world. Just ask Max and Kate Bush. Though the gang injured Vecna through perfect strategy, he survived and managed to create four huge rifts that converged on the center of town, meaning the Upside Down has begun its invasion. The end is nigh, with Vecna and the Mind Flayer hoping to plunge the multiverse into years of upheaval and chaos one might call a spell plague. One thing is for sure, the final volume will have a multiversal showdown for the ages. But with that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas and theories, so please leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out my videos on Vecna and the Mind Flayer, links in the description. And if there's anything else you'd like for me to explore, 
please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. She couldn't move. It was like she, she was in a trance or something. Or under a spell. A curse. Vecna's curse.